I'm very excited to talk to you today. This, th these episodes went by so quick. I didn't realize how many I kept on pressing to the next episode, to the next episode, to the next episode, because I needed to know what was happening. Um, the, the, the growth of, of, of each character, but also I love chess. I mean, what was your first initial emotion about chess yourself? Did you just ha have any real connection to it prior to this? Uh, or was it just something that seemed very interesting, but it was also other people's worlds at the time? Um, maybe a bit of both, really. Uh, I mean, I, I, I grew up as a child playing drafts, um, which is nowhere near as complicated, I know. But it has the same board. And so my mum then went out and bought me some chess pieces that fit on my drafts board. And uh, I, I did get into it and I learned how to play and I found it interesting, but it, at that age anyway, it was kind of above me, I think. Um, it, was, it was a bit too complicated, but I, uh, I, I did always think it was fascinating. And I, I played, when I, was a, uh, when I was a kid, I played a, um, another chess player in a, in a little um, like two-part drama thing um, in France. Um, so I kind of got into the world of chess then when I was very young. Um, and then I came back to this and I, I worked with Scott, the director on a thing called Godless, which is another Netflix show. Um, and he got in touch with me and um, he had this uh, really cool, mad idea to just kind of absorb ourselves into the world of chess and, um, and, and try and tell this story, really. So I went out and I bought myself another chess set because I'd, I'd given that one away by that time. And I kind of reacquainted myself with chess and just got used to moving pieces around, really. And... Um, because I knew I didn't need to have, I didn't have to be a amazing chess player. I just needed to look like I knew what I was doing really. And so we had some great uh, people from the chess world come in and, um, and teach us how to just kind of play with confidence or to maybe psych someone out with your confidence or, you know, how to take pieces, how to move pieces across the board, whether you slide it or whether you pick it up and place it. Um, just kind of getting a rhythm and a feel for, for chess. And the more we did that and the more I hung around with these um, really quite amazing people, who were, you know, fantastic in the world of chess, uh, the more I realized how much of an amazing world it is. Well, in the you were talking about the speed and trying to uh, find uh, your own specific rhythm. Well, your character, Benny, I think has his own specific rhythm by, by far. I mean, just the look alone, uh, this this guy who lives in a in a big city, which you wouldn't expect, who has kind of a a countryish look at times too, a knife on his belt kind of feel, um, but is also a, a cerebral chess person. You know, what was it uh, that you first saw at, in the character that you really wanted to kind of exploit or run after? Well, I think uh, Scott wanted me. Well, the, the thing I did with him before, I was playing a cowboy. Um, and so I think he kind of just saw me as that and I, he wanted to bring back the facial hair. He wanted to bring back the hat um, and ended up in a, like a, a long coat. And I had a, a, I was supposed to having guns on my hip. I had a, I had a knife. So we were kind of going with a bit of a cowboy cross with um, well, a chess champion cross with a pirate of some kind. I don't really know. <laughs> um, it's, a, it's a mad look. But I mean, I, I, I saw it as as Benny kind of. Um, you know, slightly tickling his ego, certainly. But I think he likes to walk into a room and uh, for everyone to turn around and look at him. And I think he uses that demeanor as um, as probably a, a tactic to unsettle his opponent as well. I mean, nobody else looks like that. He's very much the oddball. And I think he enjoys yeah. and he almost gets off on being that oddball. Well, and he does he does definitely walk in wanting to command the room. But I, I don't necessarily know if it's something for his own confidence or if it's something to shake others. Because that's something that yeah, I think it's a bit of both. I think it's both, definitely. Yeah, uh, and and I I think it's interesting too how um not only commands a room but he always talks like he's the teacher in every room as well too. So, uh, what what did they put you through in the paces in regards to chess to make you feel that you could create those moments and say those words with confidence? Uh, well, like I said, I mean, we just worked on, uh, on, on familiarizing ourselves with the board and with the pieces and, uh, and then also with the clocks and with scribbling down uh, scores as well and trying to get that rhythm right too. So sometimes you, we'll, we'll take a couple of moves before we scribble down because we realized everyone was kind of doing too much and you, you could get distracted by a clock and, or, or scribbles, whereas actually the, the, the interesting thing is the pieces moving around the board and what that means. And, when to take moments and rest and look at the other person or 
um, when to psych them out. So it was it was it wasn't so much about kind of learning the games as such, although all the games were laid out and most of the games are based on famous games between famous players uh, across all years. So uh, if if you've got a keen eye, you should be able to uh, to recognize certain games. Well, I, I wish I had that keen eye too, because this is, I think chess is one of those things that when you see someone do it right, you wish you were good enough or even you question your, your own your own intelligence enough to do it as well. I mean, does that kind of come up too when you see some of these people who are playing it in their heads and they're calling out you know, mm-hmm. a couple games or playing multiple games at the same time? Yeah, I know. I, I, you, I, there, there is one scene in the show actually where uh, Beth and I are, we're in the car and we're driving and we are playing a game in our heads. And those were very hard lines to learn because it's basically, it's not, it's not, a, it's not a line. It's a, it's a, it's a line of code, really. It's, it's, it's calling out a, a, a piece and then a number and a square and they have to be perfect. So that was a very hard thing to learn. Uh, but like I said, we had some amazing people that um, helped teach us and, um, Watching them demonstrate a game played through, for example, was fascinating because um, they would always get kind of carried away and end up going too far and they'd, they'd have to pull them back and go, no, 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 we're not going that far, we're not going that far. And then they'd reverse and just turn it all and they'd start playing backwards. Just go, God, it takes a certain mindset to be at that level. And they all, all of them, they had this kind of this like extra thing behind their eyes that you could just go, well, there's something very special about you. You're supremely talented at something. For sure, and I think that's what uh, that comes through in this. Uh, and you're mentioning Beth, so let's let's talk about the Queen. Um, you know, I I, I think uh, Anya did an amazing job. I think she she went through so much. I guess from from your perspective, you, you know, shooting this, did you see all the growth she did? Not only you know as an actor, of course, but her character grows so many different ways in this as well too because we we cover it seems it could be decades to to, to us in 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 how much she grows and changes constantly but it's not that long really in this show no no i remember reading the script though some of my favorite scenes are actually the really really early scenes with young beth in the orphanage and i just think that really sets up um you know who this main character is where she comes from and why you should care about her and um you know how, how she kind of was left with nothing and then strives to, well, falls into discovering chess and realizing she's really good at it, and then pushing herself to to expand upon that and 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 to try and reach greatness. And everyone she meets kind of comes in and, and just tries to aid aid her. Really, uh, there isn't a baddie in this show. The baddie is the um, is the little person that sits on her shoulder and, and whispers terrible things in her mind, and um, you know messes up her own life for herself everyone around her is actually trying to look out for her uh, which I I loved when I read the script and and when I saw Anya um, in different parts of her progression through her character I uh, yeah I was very impressed especially when I watched it and you can see how she's kind of slop she walks sloppily at the beginning um, in the earlier scenes that I'm not part of where she hasn't met me yet um, versus all the way at the end where she's um, with the Soviets and she's got a very different demeanor, stands differently, holds herself differently. So even her facial structure seems to change somehow. I thought she did a fantastic job. I thought she really, um, really carries it. I think so too. And um, speaking of, you know, uh, Soviets and, and things like that, what did they teach you about what chess is to the Soviet nation at that time? Did they, did they kind of give you some, some history lessons on how important it was you know, we have, you know, football and things like that, but to them, that is their, that is their football, their baseball, their basketball. Yeah. Yes. No, I know. They, they, they were um, talking quite a bit about it and um, the Chinese as well now catching up hugely at the moment, apparently. Um, And some of the guys that were teaching um, uh, had students going off and playing in competitions at the time when we were filming and they'd get texts and just, you know, see how they're doing. So, so there was an annual like story going on on set anyway, which is quite cool. Um, uh, but in terms of the Soviets, um, I mean, I kind of knew that a little bit anyway, um, but it's more about their approach. They just kind of approach things very, very differently. Um, I, I even have a line in the, in the show um, that says that the Russians, they, they don't, they, they, they play as a team, they play together. 
um, which makes them far more strong um, and they're able to analyze gameplays and um, and work together so that each other can move forward whereas the Americans kind of tackle it on their own which right. I quite like I quite liked that line I thought it was quite interesting um, and especially right. everything that was going on at the time with America and the Soviets and the Cold War and it was, tensions were so high and yet you could you could play a, a game of chess which is just two people sat opposite a board going at each other and I think back in the 60s that probably meant an awful lot more to governments and officials just these two people sitting down battling it out because the countries can't Right. Well, and I think that's a great thing about Benny, too, is that while he does talk about, you know, the singular nature of America and Americans and how we deal with stuff, I feel like he is also hiding a little bit of who he is and who he, you know, who his his true self is, too, throughout. So we kind of get to expand that throughout there, too, and find out he's he's a different person than we first expect. He's not just a cocky cowboy. You know, he's more than that. And I, I, I think that uh, I, I really enjoyed that, too. So I hope you enjoyed uh, the expansion of, of the character too, not only just how he relates to Beth's world, but also um, how he kind of consumes his own and how he lives his own. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, he's kind of like Beth in some way. I think that's what their attraction is to each other, actually, initially anyway, is that they're both oddballs and they, they both stand out. Um, and they they both got, I mean, it doesn't dive into Benny's past at all, but I think he's definitely covering up and masking something that's that probably is a lot more deep rooted that he doesn't want to show off at all. He wants to um, maintain the illusion of his um, talent and success. But I think deep down, he's probably got a different, but somehow similar story to Beth in that um, he's kind of come out of nowhere and um, discovered chess that he's very good at and just kind of gone full out with that. Very cool. I, I think it, it, it's, uh, you know, I, I guess I, I just say I'm, I'm a huge fan of when it comes to chess and using it as, you know, an allegory for something or, or, or metaphor for something, you know. I, I, I think that it has so many standpoints that it could tell a story on its own. And some of my favorite films actually uh, actually revolve around uh, chess and how that kind of relates to life in some way too. Uh, did you take any life lessons from the game of chess yourself by chance? Um, <laughs> always hide your, always um, hide your queen. Never be the pawn. I mean, there's a that's, that's like, there's so many out there. It could be any of those. Don't things. get too cocky. I mean, don't get too cocky. Don't think you've won it. Someone could just kind of come around and just take down your queen, and and the game's all over. Right. Um, seen lots of games actually on YouTube where people get very cocky and don't realize that actually they've fallen into a trap. So well, yeah, I, don't play too fast and don't get too cocky. I guess. <laughs> uh, you know, uh, the, the last thing I want to ask is, uh, you know, how would you uh, explain this to people who, who, you know, when they think about a story about chess, they feel like it's slower and it's not something that's, uh, you know, a, a, as enthralling as you might think. I mean, how, how would you explain how, how this movie and, and chess itself has, has its own speed and it have as a way to grip you? Well, I mean, I, th I think the I think the show runs at a really nice speed. Actually, um, it's not too slow, but it's certainly not fast either. It it kind of trundles along at a really nice pace that that chess does as well. I mean, what, and once you kind of get into, and you don't need to know that much about it, but you, there's something just naturally quite enthralling about watching these beautiful pieces. And it's a game that has been played for hundreds of years. It's an ancient, ancient game. Um, and it's uh, yeah, I think the show kind of tracks the speed of a chess game really there's moments where there's lulls and then there's moments where it's hugely exciting and there's moments where you don't know what's going on or or kind of you know who, who you're even really rooting for and um and uh yeah i see the similarities between the actual show and and, and a game of chess quite quite strongly all right well um before we close this I, ha I have to ask um when do you start working on the mouse guard do you know uh when oh you start Mouse guard. I mean, that. I don't, I don't know what happened. That that all got kind of messed up when um, Disney bought happened. Fox. And oh, so that's not going to be a so, thing anymore. And no, it got cancelled. I mean, I, I've spoken to Wes, the director. He did Maze yeah. Runner, and um, I was really excited to 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 see what that guy does after Maze Runner. And then he said, "Oh, you'd like to be part of it." And so I was really looking forward to it. And I, I found out we got cancelled a day before I flew out. The uh. night before I flew out. So, I mean, I spoke to Wes and he's still, I mean, he put so much work into it, so much artistic uh, work and um, some of the, the sizzle reel I saw was uh, phenomenal. 
Did they show um, you a, a, a were you a character you were going to be? Did they show you kind of a Yeah, a, yeah. They showed the whole world. They're, 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 I mean, the, what they had already, someone had put an awful lot of work into it, like a lot of work. Um, it's it's terrible, really, that it's all gone. Well, I mean, you're going to have I mean, I, Andy I Circus is part of it, so it's going to be amazing, you know? Yeah. Yeah, no, I know. We were starting to get together a really good cast. And it was going to be quite interesting. And I'm not a huge fan of motion capture, but I think done in the right way, it can be really effective. And I think playing um, in, in that small miniature world of mice, it would be perfect for that. But uh, I don't know. We'll see. Last time I spoke to Wes, he was like, you know, you know let's, it's on the back burner at the moment, but it's still a passion project that I want to get off the ground. Well, I would say right now, in, in, in this world right now of uh, content-driven uh, services, Netflix, I, you know, there's never a bad idea if we can do it right, I feel. So, there's, you know, if, if, we can get, uh, if we can get this out there and, and do it correctly, I feel like the fans will follow it. So, uh, I want to thank you very much. Uh, this was such a, a pleasure when it came to watching this. I, I enjoyed... Oh, thank you. Uh, I'm so glad. Yeah, I, I, I enjoyed each character. I enjoyed... Um, you know, Beth and everything she took from the people around her, uh, whether it was good or bad and how it kind of reflected her. But at the end, uh, it was just the little girl wanting to play chess at the same time who uh, was just trying to find happiness as well. And then I think that mm. there's, a, there's a lot of growth in, in that throughout, too, and then letting go of the past and a lot of lessons. Um, but I really did enjoy it. And like I said, when it comes to chess and using that as a metaphor, I, I'm on board 100%. No, it works really well as a metaphor, I think. Yeah. yeah. Very cool. I'm, I'm very happy with it. For sure. And glad then, you enjoyed uh, it, man. Glad yeah, you enjoyed uh, it. 100%. And then, uh, uh, Benny seemed like a lot of fun too. Um, uh, I, I was like, I, I, I have some questions that I can't talk about now because, you know, I don't want to give anything away, but there's definitely some things about him that it made question, like, what was the backstory on this too? So maybe we'll talk mm -hmm. again in the future and we'll kind of look back at this and ask those questions. So, uh, yeah, but it, yeah, sounds good. until then, such a fun, such a fun show. And I want everyone to watch this limited series and just kind of enjoy it for what it is. Uh, the Queen's Gambit, of course, the 23rd on Netflix. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, man. Thank you very much. Thank <laughs> you.